After a brief introduction about machine learning basis, let's move on to linear algebra, which is the first step we will encounter in our path that will bring us to a deep understanding of, of the math behind machine learning. So what is linear algebra? Well, linear algebra is a mathematical subject that provides the foundation on where all the other mathematical objects are defined and, more importantly, the arithmetical operations that, we can, that can be done with those mathematical objects. So, don't worry, uh, linear algebra is a very abstract subject, but we will dive into the, this abstraction, grab some useful concept, and then re-emerge from the depths of abstraction with a more understanding of the reality and especially of machine learning. So, these are the first main topics we will encounter in uh, this video and the further one. The we will talk about vector spaces, matrices, linear independence and bases, and linear mappings. But first thing first, let's start with vector spaces, which are the, the environment where every other mathematical object lives and is defined. Our goal, in, in fact, is to define an environment, a space, where all the elements inside it can be combined in some useful ways. So we will define those elements as vectors, and we want to be these vectors as generic as possible. So with one definition, we can comprehend a very different uh, types of elements. The environment we mentioned we will will be called vector space, and will be uh, the sum, the set of all vectors that will follow some combination rules. Those combination rules, in, uh, on mathematically speaking, are said to be operations. And vector space is defined with two operations, addition and scalar multiplication. With addition, we take two vectors, two elements of the vector space, and the operation will re return to us one vector. In scalar multiplication, here we are, we take one real number, a vector, and the operation, the scalar multiplication, will return to us, will give us a new vector. But uh, uh, vector spaces with uh, those uh, two operations has some constraints, some conditions. In addition, uh, in the addition operation, we will uh, uh, define four conditions that has to be satisfied. Uh, the closer, associativity, neutral element, and the inverse element. As you can see, the first element, said closer, uh, means that if we combine, if we take two vectors on the vector space, then the res result of the addition operation needs to stay in the vector space. So the operation is closed because every element that is combined with another one in the vector space returns another element in the vector space. We have then associativity, as I, as I mentioned, neutral element and inverse element. I want to uh, take a, a deep look to neutral element and inverse element. Neutral element means that there exists some uh, one vector we uh, denote it here with zero. Uh, the neutral element means that if we sum up zero with a vector, then res the result will be the vector itself. With the inverse element, we uh, generally define the inverse element like this, but in addition, we also write this minus x. And uh, the uh, inverse element property is that if we sum up the vector and its inverse, the result will be the neutral element. Okay, so these are the conditions uh, to, addition, uh, to the addition operation. Let's move on to the scalar multiplication. And uh, here the uh, constraints are uh, associativity and neutral element. 
Please note that here the neutral element is not zero, also because we are talking about a scalar neutral element, but it's one. In fact, we define uh, the neutral element as if we multiply a um, vector with the neutral element, then the result will be the vector itself. After defining the properties of the two operations, we want to uh, define some properties that, def uh, that are the combination between these two operations. And this property is the distributivity property. This, um, these properties could seem very obvious, but uh, as I pointed out before, we are talking about the basis about algebra and mathematics in general. So it's uh, completely uh, right that uh, these properties may sound obviously. So with the, this general definition of vector spaces, we uh, can point out that uh, geometric vectors are vectors, polynomials are vectors, audio signals, images, tuples of numbers are even vectors. So let's start with the geometric vectors. Uh, the vector space that contains, uh, in which uh, the geometric vo uh, vectors live, is said to be Euclidean vector space. And we define those two operations. You certainly know about uh, the um, operations between real numbers. Here we are, we are talking instead about this space, r to the power of 1. The properties, and once we define these two operations, de derive from the properties of r, because we are uh, de defining the two operations as element-wise. Also, polynomials and audio signals are vectors. Audio signals can be thinked as polynomials, a wave that uh, is moving in time. So, we will talk about uh, polynomial vector spaces. And let p to the power of n, the set that contains all polynomials that, are of the, that have a degree of n or less. Of course, because if uh, uh, we, are we are taking the, all the polynomials that have power of 2, the degree uh, 2, then the polynomials that have the degree 1, we can say that uh, the coefficient of the uh, x to the power of 2 is 0. So we, uh, that's why we take polynomials of degree n or less. And let's define two polynomials, two general polynomials, p to the power of n and q to the power of n. Both are of degree n, but as I mentioned, we can take a, a, even a less degree of n by thinking about these coefficients equals to zero. So th this uh, set of uh, polynomials is a vector space because we can define these two operations. As you can see, these operations rely to the element-wise operations. So the properties arise again with the properties of uh, the real numbers. For example, here we have the addition operation in practice. We take um, two polynomials uh, green and red. As you can see, both are polynomials of degree 3 because the green one can be considered with a 0 to these uh, two unknown variables. And here we have the result of the addition operation. The blue uh, line is our polynomial derived from the addition of the red and green ones. To talk about, uh, to demonstrate uh, that images and, uh, two, and two plus of numbers are vectors, 
we will uh, we need to wait uh, till the next section when we will uh, talk about the matrices I want to introduce one more concept that is vector subspaces uh, we take for example a set of vectors which is our vector space uh, V we can then define a subset of V in which the conditions and the two operations lie again on U so uh, U will be a vector subspace please note that not all subsets are of V are subspaces and here we have three cases where uh, the conditions are not satisfied for example in the B case in the B subset we have no neutral element it's missing so this is not a subspace of uh, a plane r to the power of 1 the uh, only one only subspace here is the zero element it says it is the simplest subspace or vector space that we can define but uh, let's explain why the a uh, the a subspace uh, sorry subspe subset uh, is not a subspace and that's because uh, of closure property for example if we consider the addition operation and we take x and y as the two vectors in the subset then the sum of the two elements could not lie on the vector subspace so this is not a real vector subspace so uh, in the vector spaces uh, section we introduced our math uh, mathematical uh, field where all uh, mathematical the mathematical objects are defined in the next section we will dive into uh, introduce a new mathematical object which are uh, which are uh, the mat matrices and, and as we can we can see uh, matrices will be a very fundamental object that will allow us to do lot of operation in a simple manner.